match day one. Finally, the UEFA Women's Champions League has started and I thought I'd start my analysis with Bayern Munich versus Roma. Starting here in the ninth minute with a Bayern Munich throw-in. Bayern's midfield shape was typically a 2-4 or a 2-3 shape with either Stanway or Zadrazil as your CDM. I say a 3-1 because whilst typically Nash Wing stayed a bit deeper or paired with Stanway as a left-sided CDM, Gwyn often pushed really high up on his right-hand side into more of a right-wing position, allowing Dahlman to roam in the central space between the lines. This was against what was meant to be either a 4-1 4-1 or 4-5-1 but Roma really struggled to maintain that structure because of these high-flying fullbacks for Bayern. With them pushing as high as they did into those wide spaces that pinned back the wide midfielders for Roma so despite Roma wanting to play this mid-block with their wide midfielders tucking in as much as they were, Bayern were able to hem Roma towards the edge of their box and because of Bayern having all their forwards in this central space it meant that when they did get the ball out into those wide areas and swung across in they had numbers to be able to contest. Okay, so with this play coming out towards the left-hand side, Nash Wing is able to push up into left-wing position. You can see that all of the forwards for Bayern are more central, allowing their two fullbacks to be able to push up into those wide areas. But then also, because the forwards are all playing in a central area, it causes the Roma back line to stay relatively narrow, but it creates spaces out wide for the forwards to be able to underlap for Bayern. That's exactly what we see here with this really nice run. Another quirk of Roma is what's expected of their wide centre midfielders out of possession. So Gugliano here we can see is pushing out to put a little bit more pressure onto Stanway and similarly Fiasinger she'll push out too. Whilst that will put more pressure on those deeper line players for Bayern it did mean that there was more space for the forwards either side of Kumagai to be able to potentially link up. So we can see that here with Gugliano and Fiasinger basically not really affecting play and a ton of space either side of Kumagai for Bayern to exploit. So as the hard running Damjanovic here looks to try and create centrally. We've got Stanway high, so that means deeper we're going to have Sadrazil paired here with Nashwing having dropped from that high position to become that left sided centre defensive midfielder. We've got out wide Gwyn, our right back. Fortunately for Roma, Stanway's shot is blocked and Roma are able to try and briefly start a counter attack, which binds counter press forces an early long ball for Giacinti trying to run the channel. Giacinti did this until she was subbed, looking to try and get control of the ball and run the channel and wait for support. Anyway, from the throw-in, we get to see Bayern move into their 2-3 build-up. I should say that sometimes Zazrazil and Stanway dropped into full-back positions or wide centre-back positions with the other moving into CDM. So for example here, if Zazrazil dropped to right centre-back, then Stanway would become the CDM. This allowed them to then be able to push their full-backs higher up. This was against Roma playing this 4-1-4-1 with Giacinti and the rest of the midfielders just covering really, trying to force Bayern Munich into playing into those wide spaces but at least initially they weren't that intense so Bayern were still able to try and pass through them which is what we see on this occasion with as I mentioned your wide centre midfielders in this case Giuliana trying to push out but just getting picked off and then I should also mention that with that 4-1-4-1 there was space either side of Kumigai where those Bayern forwards could move into and then with the technical ability of Bayern's players they were able to chip the ball into them on a few occasions and then from there the likes of Damnanovic, Dahlman etc could start attacking transitions. Alternatively, on this left-hand side, ball could drop and position in this channel, forcing Roma to somewhat narrow and creating the opportunity for the left-back to run up the left-hand side channel, which is somewhat what we see on this occasion, eventually leading to, as we saw earlier, all our forwards really narrow, our right-back Gwyn rushing up at right wing essentially, Stanway is our CDM and the space is vacated by Gugliano and Firesinger being exploited. Fortunately, Darman isn't able to capitalize, which essentially was the story of the game. Okay, so moving on to the 35th minute, gonna skipping through this initial part till we see Bayern setting up into their 2-3 shape versus that 4-1-4-1 with again, our two wide centre midfielders, Gugliano and Firesinger looking to push out, trying to support Giacinti with Bayern exploiting that space immediately. Of course, given the positioning of the Bayern forwards narrow, central, they occupy so many of the Roma players and because Roma are trying to play quite a high line to support that they're trying to put pressure at this point, it did create opportunities for the likes of Dahlman to be able to run in behind for defenders to clip through balls. However, these were really ineffective as Caesar basically swept up all of them. So whilst Cesar was really good at sweeping, she was rather skittish if she came under any pressure and did kick the ball long quite often. Anyway, on this occasion, she plays it short into 
to what is a 2-3 shape with Kumagai as our CDM flanked either side by the fullbacks hugging the touchline. This was against Bayern Munich's 4-2-3-1 press where our centre forward is going to press towards whichever side receives the ball and out towards the touchline squeezing the space that Roma have to play in. Roma avoided playing through the centre of the park and instead opted to play down the touchline typically on this right hand side trying to have Di Guglielmo, Gigliano and Javi combine and try to release Javi beyond the pressure of Nash Wang. The reason I chose this scenario was because it was one of the very few times where Roma avoided the press, avoided being fouled or making an error themselves and so Harvey was able to drive forward and create this attacking transition. Initially it looked dangerous but unfortunately Giacinti's run was just too basic. She needed to run to the right to drag the two centre backs for buying towards that side and create an overload on the other side. Anyway, the attack breaks down but that was the key way that Roma sought to try and build up from deep. Fortunately for us, that allows us to see Roma's midfield shape which is similar to Bayern in that we have our two fullbacks flanking our CDM and Kumagai. We have our number eights between the lines and typically Javi will try and stay towards the right hand side hugging the touchline and she's going to be looking to try and whipping across with Gigliano trying to either position towards the right hand side to support Javi or position more central with Giacinti to try and be another option in the box to contest crosses. Unfortunately the play breaks down due to an unforced error here and from there Roma forced all the way back to their goalkeeper and then as they try on a number of occasions they look to try and play over the mid block or press by Bayern trying to take advantage of overloading higher on this left hand side so they've kept their striker, fullback and near-sided wide midfielder all high to try and contest second balls. Of course, if this pass by Linari isn't good enough, then potentially you have a number of players for Bayern Munich who will be able to counter-attack. Unfortunately, Roma aren't able to retain possession. So in the 41st minute, we get to see Roma building up instead of that 2-3 shape in more what I'd class as more of a 3-4-3. So we have Kumagai as that central centre-back, allowing our two centre-backs to be able to split. Our fullbacks will be able to push high and fire singer and Gugliano to become our two CDMs or centre midfielders and so as you can guess they try and draw Bayern in with those short passes initially and then they try and play a lobbed ball or through ball into the players that they position beyond that press but on this occasion it doesn't work and then now Bayern are able to counter with somewhat of a numerical advantage or at least parity okay and then lastly having a look at the 77th minute we've got Roma in that 2-3 shape at this point Giacinti has gone off and Bienz is playing as a centre forward she's doing the same role so hard running into the channels on regain and being an aerial threat in the box for crosses but we get to see Roma flex from a 2-3 to a 3-1 with our near-sided fullback running beyond Javi or La Torre when she came on to play uh, right wing instead to continue as they've been doing throughout and whipping across from the right hand side unfortunately this really wasn't a great avenue for consistent shot creation but from it fortunately for us we get to see Roma's much more aggressive 3-1 4-2 press against Bayern Munich building up in that 2-3 or 2-4 shape deep. Essentially Kumigai pushes higher to help the press whilst either of the two centre backs so Linari or Minami will step into her position as CDM and honestly it was a significantly more effective means of Roma establishing possession in Bayern Munich's half rather than their quite ineffective deep build up. So as mentioned we get to see Minami in that CDM position and Roma's aggression paying off here with them being able to contest possession in Bayern's half, win the ball back in Bayern's half and then set up into their midfield shape and rinse and repeat. And with that, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, consider sharing on social media, subscribing and I think my next video will be Chelsea versus Paris FC unless you suggest otherwise and with that we're out.